Hello and welcome to VW Surfwagon, where today it's just me. We're going to do something a bit different today. I am in the Mark 7 Golf R-Line 1.5 TSI DSG. So we don't have a lot of modern cars on our channel. Uh, and by that I mean we never have modern cars on our channel. This is a first. So I thought I'd just do sort of like a short video, a young person in a car that I've never driven before. I've literally never driven this car before. Um, I don't know what to expect. I've never driven a car this modern before, I don't think. It's a 2019 Golf. So yeah, let's see if I can even work out how I drive it. Safety first. It's got a turny key, unlike quite a lot of modern cars these days that have um, start buttons, um, which is interesting. Okay, it wants me to depress the brake. And we're on. Okay, let's go for drive. I'm gonna put my foot on the brake, put it into drive. And then take my foot off the brake. And it should move. It's weird driving an auto. I don't often drive automatics. So a little bit about this car. Um, this is the yeah, the 1.5 TSI, so it's the turbo 1.5, which has 150 brake horsepower, which compared to my Mark IV Golf GTI, it's exactly the same horsepower stat which is quite impressive really from a 1.5. So it's obviously a far more efficient engine that they've got in this, um, which is quite cool. Um, something I should say about the R-Line, it's a different trim spec, so it's got like fake carbon fiber stuff going on. Um, it's got sort of more aggressive bumper and it's got either full leather, like in here, or half leather seats, uh, which are very nice. Something else that's nice about this car is that it's got Apple connectivity, um, same with Samsung and stuff. It's got a cool, like, you can get your boost gauge on a digital dial on the, in the centre console, which is a fun little novelty. Uh, so something else about the R-Line is that the suspension is um, firmer than in the standard Golf. So it's sort of like halfway between a standard Golf and a Golf GTI in terms of the sort of suspension and the and the trim spec. But yeah, you can either get it with a 1.5 turbo, either manual or DSG. Um, you can get like a TDI one as well in this trim spec. But yeah, so this is the 1.5 TSI DSG. So which means it does actually have these little sort of flappy paddle style little tabs um, if you want to, to drive it harder. So it's got 150 brake horsepower, or just under, which is like the same as my Mark IV Golf GTI, which has got a 1.8 turbo. So it's obviously doing something a bit more efficient in the Mark VII. Um, and it's 0 to 60 time is 8.2 seconds, which is pretty much exactly the same, just like maybe 0.1 of a second slower than the GTI. So if I just put my foot down in fully auto, I'll tell you what it feels like. It does rev quite high. It feels great. It's, it feels very torquey compared to the uh, my Golf GTI. One thing I will say though, is that I'm not a huge fan of an auto. I know that I'm not a good enough driver to get the most out of a manual gearbox, but if I was going to have one of these, I think I'd get a manual just for the fun of it. I'm now going to try these little flappy paddle things to see how fast the gear changes actually can be and to feel sort of, there we go, so that's put it into manual. So I'm in manual second gear right now, if I floor it. It's quite quick. Those gear changes are really impressively quick, actually. Uh, let me, how do I put it back into... There we go. That puts it back into fully auto. Now, that gearbox is actually quicker than I expected. And that's very fun using these, I have to say. Um, it does feel quicker than my Mark IV, which is probably expected. But at the same time, it's from a 1.5 rather than a 1.8 turbo. Um, which is quite impressive and it's a lot heavier this car than mine because of all the safety features that they've added and all sorts of things so it does it is quite impressive now the r-line is more expensive than the regular golf and i wonder whether you actually need fake carbon fiber and a bigger bumper i mean most of you would probably say no but one thing I will say is the slightly firmer suspension does make a difference in the corners. It handles really well. My Golf, the GTI Mark IV, is more firm 
as it is a GTI, which means it, it does feel like it probably would be better in the corners. But this suspension is a lovely combination of comfortable but firm. So it's got that sort of nice balance between a great sort of cruiser and at the same time if you thrash it into a corner it will go around it pretty well, which I like a lot. So let me just try these little semi-auto things again. So if I'm in fully auto, then I can just flick it out. Oh, and it handles really nicely. It's a seven speed as well, so apparently this thing can average up to 50 mpg. What I love about it is that it's a nice all-rounder, because you could drive this down the motorway doing 50 mpg in fully auto and be super comfortable, or you could be driving down some nice country lanes and sort of get the uh, semi-automatic flappy paddle things going. Uh, and you can have a bit of fun with it. It's, it's quicker than I thought. I genuinely thought this would be quite laggy. I don't know if you guys know, but Sam has got a Volvo V70 T5, which is a very fast, it's got 250 brake horsepower, very fast Volvo. It's an auto with a Tiptronic, which is the sort of the old version of this. You can change gears manually um, with, with the gear stick and sort of flick it down. Um, and that is dreadful when you do that. It's far quicker in fully auto, because if you try and use the Tiptronic, it's so laggy, you, you press it, you wait, and then the gear changes. It's just not ideal. And I thought this would be not that bad, but still, I'd rather have a manual. But actually, these are really, really fast and really fun. And I can imagine if you're driving down a sort of country lane, or a mountain pass or something, if you're lucky enough to live in that part of the world, um, it would be incredibly fun. Something else I'll say is I am currently in sport mode, I think, where's the button? It's this one. I am in sport mode. You can also put it in eco mode, which means that when you're driving slowly, it will shut down two of the cylinders, so you're driving a super eco two-cylinder Golf, which is very cool, because I think that's great, and a great environmental incentive. But yeah, it's a sports mode. If you put your foot down in fully auto in sports mode, it will rev the tits off it, which I like. I like the fact that it doesn't mind revving. Look, watch this. That goes for it. There is something that I do love about older cars, but I have to say, I would love one of these. It's very nice to drive, very smooth. It does lose some of that sort of feeling of being sort of more at one with the car. I don't know, it's really hard to explain with older cars that you don't quite get in this. It feels a little bit detached. I'm sure that doesn't really make any sense, but, but that's just how I feel. Something I should say for Alex's benefit is that it's got 380 litres of boot space, which is not bad for a hatchback. It's uh, pretty good, actually. I have to say, this 1.5 TSI engine is a lovely all-rounder because it's very good on fuel for a petrol, and it can go when you want it to. Uh, a bit like this. It really pulls, really pulls. It, it feels like it should be a, a two litre turbo or a, or a one eight turbo. It really does. It really feels a lot quicker than it should do. When someone says a 1.5, you don't think it's gonna be quick, but this is very rapid for that engine size and this amount of weight. I know it's not like a Lamborghini or anything, but I can just drop it a gear and just floor it. That's so fun, without having to use a clutch, without the human error. If you were a better driver, you'd want a manual, but oh, hang on, I've noticed a flaw. When you're turning the steering wheel, you can't drop it a gear because the flappy paddle's over here. Yeah, that's not ideal. So yeah, not that I have much to compare it to other than my Mark IV Golf GTI, um, but I can see how this is a nice, all-rounder that sort of sits in between a very sensible family car and quite a nippy, fun piece of kit when you want it to be. And I want one. I definitely want one. So thank you very much for watching this video. I know it's a bit of a, a bit of a different one, a bit of a shorter one, but it's something that I just, I know I don't know a huge amount about cars, but if someone sort of my age was looking at buying or financing something like this, it might just be nice to see someone's opinion who has similar knowledge of cars as them um, and just wanted to get someone like them's opinion. So yeah, let us know if you hated it or if you want to see more stuff like this down in the comments below because we have a few friends with some uh, interesting, more modern cars. I've got a friend with an S1 um, who I'd quite like to do a video on. 
Um, so yeah, let me know. Thank you so much. If you want to subscribe, press the button somewhere on screen um, and watch another one of our videos and we'll upload again shortly. Thank you very much.